first and foremost, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart and let you know how much I appreciate you. Your efforts, your deliberation, and I know that the Wilson family appreciates the swiftness of the justice that you've given Mo. Now, I'm not going to be up here long, but I put this picture up here for a reason. <clears throat> if you could read this lengthy transcript that's been going on for three weeks, we probably said the defendant, Caitlin Armstrong, a thousand times. I want today to be about Mo Wilson. I want to talk about Mo Wilson today. I don't want to talk about Caitlin Armstrong anymore. I feel like you guys have done your job and you have done it diligently. <clears throat> so I want to refocus on Mo. Looking at ballistics and DNA and, and, and uh, cell phone data and, and Jeep data and the black Jeep, you get so bogged down that we lose the reason we're here. She's a beautiful person. And I even learned something about her in listening to Karen yesterday. I was so moved by her words that somehow in her daughter's soul, she knew she wasn't going to be here long. So she lived life to the fullest. <clears throat> and I think I heard Karen ask you, some of you guys are parents, know about the parents' love. It oozed from her yesterday, as well as Eric. That's the parents' love. And to be honest with you, I felt Mr. Armstrong's love for his daughter. I felt it. But the difference is, his daughter is still sitting right there. She's not in a good situation, but she's still sitting right there. But Eric and Karen, their daughter is gone. I want you to know I was not being callous when I called her a prodigy. In trial prep, talking to all those cyclist people that you heard, Alan and Lance and Colin and people like that, they're the one that convinced me she's a prodigy. I was wondering how she got second place in one race. <laughs> and Cass cleared it up for me. She had a flat. <laughs> all kind of things happened. I'm thinking, no wonder. <laughs> but that's how good she was. I don't know much about gravel racing, but I'd be willing to bet that 25 is not your prime. I think she wasn't there yet. <clears throat> and talking to Colin Strickland one day, and I think gravel racing is a sport where the men finish a little bit ahead of the women. I think he told me she even beat him one day. And you heard him. He was a pretty good, he was a professional. Made a little money at it. She beat some of the men. That's how good she was. So today, I want to make it about her. I want to make it about what she deserves. We can have passion for Mr. Armstrong. We can even have passion for the defendant. We can certainly have passion for Eric and Karen and Matt. Matt told you he was going through a depression. His sister helped pull him out of it. I come to this thing for 30 years and I do my job and I try to do it well, no matter which side of the table I'm on. <clears throat> 
Rarely am I moved like I was when Eric said, when me and Karen are gone, Matt's not going to have anybody. It ripped through my soul. Ripped through my soul when he said it. So when you go back there to deliberate, <coughs> I don't want you to think about Caitlin Armstrong. <coughs> They'll get up as they should and say some things about her and say some things to maybe ask you to give her some kind of mercy or a second chance or don't take a whole life, whatever. I'm okay with you considering all that. I'm okay with you listening actively like you've done for the past three weeks. But when you get up and walk out that door, I want you to think about Mariah Wilson. Look at that picture, it's on your screen, and put it in your brains before you leave here. Think about how many times we've heard Caitlin Armstrong, Colin Strickland. And almost every time we heard Mo name was, did you kill Mo Wilson? Did you kill Mo Wilson? I'm here to talk about her life, not her death. She accomplished a lifetime of achievements in 25 years. And then she was taken from us way too soon. <clears throat> taken from Eric and Karen and Matt way too soon. And just a few more words before I concede my time. <coughs> my new best friend, fellow Longhorn Cash, by the way, her daddy told me, I'm gonna call her Caitlin. <laughs> I don't care, I'm still gonna call her Caitlin. <laughs> so I'm gonna call her Caitlin today too. Caitlin Cash. Just like what she said, she went back to the apartment to not let it get control over her. She's a bigger person than me. I don't know if I could do it. I just don't know if I could go back in that space every day like that. It's too tragic. It's very emotional when she talked about that washer and dryer, because we all seen that bullet hole in that washer and dryer, stackable washer and dryer. And I, when she said they replaced the tile, I had the vision of that hole in the floor in that tile. I just don't know if I could go back there. Now, I do understand that the defendant is not on trial for doing anything but the murder of Mo Wilson. The Caitlin Cash said for 555 days and 16 months, she's lived in terror and in fear, and she get how many pictures have you all seen of that sh those little wooden stairs up there? And <laughs> she's every time she get to those stairs, she got to fight herself to get up those stairs. Wherever you are back there, you think about those 16 months she suffered. And you put a plus sign on whatever number you got. I'm asking you to do that for cash and for Mo Wilson. And I do understand how everybody has suffered. And a few other things, without rehashing all that evidence we heard. Think about a few things. Although she was free to leave and free to go over there, she put her sister in harm's way by stealing her passport. That's a federal offense. What if they try to conclude that Sasha gave her a passport? You just never know. She put everybody at risk. She was selfish. <coughs> Utterly selfish. Think about that. The plastic surgery, all those things she did to evade the police. 
And for me, the video of her trying to escape was mind-boggling. I have never seen anything like it in my life. She ran a whole mile, partially cuffed, one free hand. That's probably the health of leg restraints and both hands. As you know, she got one hand out. That's probably why she couldn't raise the other hand up to deal with the fence. A whole mile in leg restraints. 19 days before this trial. That says a lot about who she is. Not her demeanor over there. You can read too much into people's demeanor. Some people may be sitting there silent. It doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean they don't care. It don't mean they don't have remorse. It could be fear. It could be anything. <clears throat> so I'm not asking you to put any value on how she's looking sitting there because that's not fair to her. I'm asking you to look at her actions, what she did to Mo, and the fact that she tried to escape, the fact that she left the country, And like I told you in closing, and like they said in opening, a shrinking violet doesn't stand over a person and give them one more in the heart for good measure. That's cold. That is cold. And think about the turmoil that she went through. We don't know for sure. But Dr. DeRussi told you it's a defensive wound. You can conclude that she's seen this coming and she's tried to protect herself or tried to cover herself. We don't know which it went in. We don't know which end it went in. But we do know it's a defensive wound. So for a flash of a second, she saw it coming and tried to protect herself. And her friend had to pop out her chest for 10 minutes, not knowing she was already dead, and live with the horror of having to go to her home. Home is a safe place. Have a bad day at work. I want to go home, relax, get the remote control, get something to drink, get some food, just relax, wait for the kids to come home from school, or whatever your situation is. Home is a safe place you go having a bad day at work. Go to the mall, having a bad day, it's crowded, doing Christmas shopping or whatever. You say, I can't wait to get home. Home for her is living hell. Home is a place where she watched her best friend. And lastly, because I asked you to put 16 months on top of whatever your number is, I want to leave you one final word about Caitlin. And I'm not talking about Armstrong. I'm talking about Cash. If you remember correctly, thank you, Arnold. On May 11th, 2022, prior to 9.17 PM, and I was quite moved because I didn't know this until yesterday. I found out the same day you did. Now, I'm getting teased for getting emotional in court because that's not my style. <laughs> when she sent her mom a picture of them saying, I will protect your daughter. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. Those are the things I want you to think about, because that's Mo Wilson's life, not someone else's.